Hello, welcome to this video. It's a second video on introduction to limits. Um, in the last video, we just introduced the notation and what, what does it mean to take a, a one-sided limit and how does that relate to a two-sided limit? And so um, let's pick up here where we have this question about um, this function whose graph below, the function's name is h of x and the graph below is, um, is gonna be uh, it's kind of hard to tell, but uh, yeah, it's going to be representative of the, the, the graph of the function. And we're looking at different x values. Uh, let's start looking at x equals negative 3. Um, at x equals negative 3, the first question, letter A, says, well, what's going on from the left-hand side? The little minus sign that's up in the superscript position afterwards means that you're approaching only from the left. So from the left, this function is approaching. I guess this is these are one-by-one one grids, so you're approaching four from the right you're also approaching four when it's a plus sign up in that superscript position that's from the right and so we're approaching four great whenever the left hand and the right hand limit agree in letter c what we have here is that um, there's no indication of whether it's a one-sided limit or not. it's a two-sided limit there's no minus or plus in that superscript position so they agree left hand limit right hand limit agree so therefore the function value is four. I mean, the limit is four, actually. The function value is what letter D is asking for. The function value when X is negative three, and from this piece of the grid that we can see, um, there's nothing, there is no function value. There is an open circle there, and that would indicate that there is no exact Y value that you could peg to when X is negative three. So we can use the phrasing does not exist um, it's overused. We just talked about how we can use it for limits, but it, it, it just, it's just, there's no Y value when X is negative three. So D and E signifies that. All right, let's look at zero. X goes to zero from the left for letter E. The function is going towards one. X goes to zero from the right for letter F. The function is going towards negative one. The left hand and the right hand limit don't agree. So therefore, in letter G, when we're asked for the limit as x goes to zero, without any indication of left or right, we have to answer that the limit does not exist. The actual function value is kind of hard to see. I, I overdrew um, the x and y axis in. It's hard to see, but um, there's a closed circle at y equals 1 when x is 0. If you intersect the y axis at 1. So that's the value when x is 0, y is 1. There's an open circle um, at the negative 1. You're headed to negative 1, but your function is not there from the, from the right-hand side. From the left-hand side, you're headed to 1, and your function is there. All right. Uh, let me move on. Uh, x equals 2. Um, the limit as x goes to 2. No indication of left or right. You do both, and you find out that it's headed towards 2. The left hand's headed towards two, the right hand's headed towards two. Yes, there's an open circle, but so what? Open circle means that uh, in, in, in our little grid that we are looking at, we don't see a value, so it does not exist. We don't know the y value. Okay, the limit is x goes to five from the right hand side. So we're headed towards a y value around this, on this sort of parabolic looking function here, and so that y value is three. Now on the left-hand side. It's very problematic. So our function is oscillating back and forth, but the frequency of the oscillations are increasing. And so there's this notion of your, your, your highest is 4 and your lowest is 2, and you're bouncing back and forth between 4 and 2. Once you get, um, and that's continuous, like that, 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 bouncing back and forth is a continuous action that's going. And, and so when, when it starts to get thicker like that, the graph, um, that's the frequency increasing. The up, the highs and the lows, they're increasing. Um, uh, the high is always the high, the low is always the low, but the, the bouncing back and forth between them increases. And there's no indication of exactly what's going on at x equals five. And so when there's this oscillation like this, especially with this increased frequency, we can't tell what's going on from the left-hand side here. It just does not exist. We'll, repeat, we'll report that as our answer. Okay. 
All right, great. Next, we want to look at what does it mean for the limit to be infinite? Okay, so what does it mean for the limit to be infinity? All right, so here's a graph, squiggly drawn graph there, but uh, as x goes to a, our functions, our function from the left and our function from the right are both increasing without bound. They agree, the left-hand limit and the right-hand limit, they're both headed towards infinity. Same thing uh, if it's minus infinity. With this other function here, we have the functions diving down, getting increasingly small. And so um, the functions are headed towards minus infinity, both from the left, the function is headed towards minus infinity, both from the left and from the right. And so what it means is that the, the actual function value from the left or from the right becomes larger and larger. It increases without bound. The closer you get to A, I can, you give me a number, I don't care what it is, I can get to that number by getting closer to A. Or on the flip side of that, you give me a negative small, a negative number, um, the, 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 the function decreases without bound. I can get to that number. Negative a million, I can get there. I just got to get close enough to A. Okay. The values of f of x can be made arbitrarily large when your limit is infinite as large as possible, as large as you want, by taking x sufficiently close to a, but not equal to a. And the, on the other end, the numbers, the values there of the function can become arbitrarily small, as small as you want them to be, by taking x sufficiently close to a, but not equal to a. Okay, great. So that's what it means for the limit to be infinite. Uh, in in a, um, a separate section, we'll look at what happens as x approaches infinity it's a totally different story the limit being infinite and x approaching infinity are two different things remember the limit value is a y value and the where x is approaching that's an x value so um but that, that's coming that, that'll be the next uh video uh set of videos um limits at infinity but let's keep digging with this um what happens with this function we have uh, x minus 2 in the denominator 5x minus 3 in the numerator x is headed towards 2. So you want to plug it to it. You want to check it and see where it's headed. But the denominator is zero. The numerator is not zero, though. The numerator is a seven. This function is headed towards seven in the numerator as you approach two and something very small in the denominator. Okay, so we have to figure out what's going on there. Um, is is that going to be infinity? Is that going to be negative infinity? We have to we have to we have to figure that out. One way to do it is to break it up to be left hand and right hand. This is definitely undefined, and so um, what's going on there is we have a vertical asymptote. Okay, when the numerator is non-zero, while the denominator is zero, this action is going to be a vertical asymptote. This isn't the only way to have a vertical asymptote, but this is it. The vertical line at x equal 2, um, the number that makes the denominator 0, that, that should be a dashed line when you go to draw the graph. And you're either approaching infinity or minus infinity as you approach that line. As, you, as x gets, you know, just, just um, if you look at it from the, from the left-hand side, a number that's very close to 2, but smaller than it, 1.99999. Um, the numerator is headed towards 7, something very, very close to 7. Denominator, when you subtract 2 from 1.99999, you end up with 1 over a million. Negative. And so 7 divided by 1 over a million negative is negative 7 million. 7 divided by a very small number is a very large number. It is a negative small number. And so, uh, it's close to 0, I'm sorry. Um, and so, the, the result is that this, this number is, is headed towards negative infinity. Um, as we go from the right-hand side, think of a number that's 
close to two, but bigger than two, 2.000001. 2 and you subtract the two. Now you have the positive value of what's above. Same action. So from the right hand side, you're very large, seven million headed towards. From the left hand side, you're very small, negative seven million. What's going on with this question is that we have the action where they are disagreeing. We have the limit as x goes to two from the left being negative infinity as x goes to 2 from the right, we have positive infinity. So they disagree. If they both were going to infinity, we could report infinity. If they were both going to negative infinity, we could report the answer as negative infinity. But when they disagree, we report the answer as does not exist. The vertical line x equals 2 is the asymptote. There's another um, asymptote that this function has, um, and that is y equals 5. We'll find that out later by looking at limits at infinity. As x approaches infinity, this function approaches 5. As x approaches negative infinity, this function approaches 5. Okay. All right, great. One more example. Sorry, this is going a little long here. Uh, absolute value in the denominator. x is going towards 3. Uh, numerator uh, is x squared minus 3x. It, it factors. And x minus 3 is a factor of the numerator. And so um, we need this. Uh, so... Uh, what's going on is this division by zero. Uh, I'm looking at special cases when the denominator is zero. I mean, you want to try to plug in, but you realize that the denominator is zero. But here, in this case, though, the numerator is also zero. But there's no kind of like, oh, we can't cancel those two. Absolute value on the bottom and, and um, parentheses up top. Yes, they're both grouping, but they, they, you just can't cancel those and say that this function behaves like y equals x. Okay. And so... What, what's going to happen here then is um, we have uh, on the left-hand side, we're going to go 2.999. On the right-hand side, we're going to go 3.001. <laughs> so, um, so we subtract the 3 from that, and we get negative 1 over 1,000. Okay, numerator is going to be basically 3 times 0. Okay. I'm sorry, 3 times The negative one over a thousand and then the denominator is also um, one over a thousand but it's positive it's a negative one over a thousand but it's inside absolute value bars so it's positive so what's going on there is that uh, those two are canceling to be a negative one times this 2.999 you get a negative 2.999 on the other end as you go towards three from the right 3.001 subtracting that you get you get the one over a one over a thousand, and the numerator is also that has that one over a thousand in it. So this time they're both positive, so you can straight cancel it. The numerator had a negative in it on the left. Now the numerator has the positive in it, and so they can cancel, and you get three point zero zero one. So from the you see from this basically is that from the left we're headed towards po, uh, negative three, and from the right we're headed towards positive three. This function is broken there. The left-hand limit does not equal the right-hand limit, so the limit doesn't exist. Okay? For the most part, though, we won't always be able to find the limit. Okay? Uh, we don't have the skills yet to be able to find these two limits. If you know how to find these limits, that's great. Um, right now, we have to resort to a calculator. There's no algebra that we can do to be able to find these kinds of limits. We need calculus. We need to be able to use... L'Hopital's rule, which we don't know yet. And so if you know how to do L'Hopital's rule, that's great, but please don't turn in that for a solution to the question. That that's you can't do that. Um, and so to keep it keep it plain field fair, uh, you can do it for yourself and know that the answer is a half and negative one sixth. But for us right now, we have to resort to basically using a computer, which we can't do anyway, right? We can't have a calculator in this class. So we want to be able to uh, evaluate this limit. We don't have a way yet without a calculator. We will. Um, it's called L'Hopital's rule. Um, but, but as we approach zero on the function one minus cosine x over x squared, um, this function approaches a half. That's what the data suggests. As we approach zero on this other function here, one plus x minus e to the x on top of three x squared, the function is approaching negative one sixth. 
The data suggests that. We're getting closer and closer to zero from both sides. And so, uh, but that's what we have to resort to at this moment. If we could though, if we had the use of a calculator. Sorry, this video is getting way too long. Let's end it. Uh, thank you for watching. Uh, comment down below, like, and subscribe. See you in the next video.